What's up, YouTube? It's me, the Artisan MC, and today I'm going to review for you Blue Eyes Samurai Episode 3. One thing I'm finding interesting about this show is how much is going on in it, which makes it hard to do a reaction review right after you finish watching it. Because there's a couple of things overlapping in this. Now, on one hand, you have the story of Mizu, Taigen, and Ringu going to meet um, Haiji Shindo. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you have the story of Akima and Seki off on a little journey while Akimi tries to escape from being wed off to the Shogun's youngest son. The story goes back and forth in time with this one when it picks up right where the last episode left off, which is Mizu being unconscious on the beach after fighting the Four Fangs and Taigen standing over her ready to kill her. Now, instead of killing her, he is tackled by Ringo. Ringo. And Ringo takes her and carries her to a shrine to try to heal her. And Tigan tags along. Now, during her convalescing and healing from her wounds from the four, fight with the Four Fangs, you start getting more glimpses of her past. As the beginning of the episode started with, with her as a baby and men coming in to try to kill her and one man not being able to do it and stopping the other one that was going to, to do it and fighting and one killing the other and blood splattering on the baby's face. Now what you also get since Mizu is having these fever dreams while she's healing is to the view of her past, and you see that as a young child, she was being hidden away in a cabin in the woods by some other woman. But her mother was also there, and her mother was on the opium. She was sitting there smoking, and if you've seen enough Japanese movies, you understand that those people that are laying on their side with a long pipe, they're getting high on opium. To dull their pain. And what you find out that her mother was kind of a prostitute to try to survive. So opium was probably helping her deal with her trauma, her grief, and what have you. And while that is interesting and she is recuperating, Tigan is practicing with the broken sword from the last thing and becoming very comfortable with it put it that way but he is also waiting for mizu to recuperate so he can do the appropriate formal challenge and he does he sits there and writes up a contract for the official um appropriate challenge or duel that they can have now once mizu wakes up and starts talking with Tigan. It is clear that she is in no state to actually be having a duel with anybody. She's dealing with death right now, I'm trying to shake it off. Um, but Tigan doesn't care about that. He's willing to give her some time to heal so he can have this duel and win his honor. Now, at a different point in the story, we get to go back to IG Shinville's castle that is serving as the hideout for Abijah Fowler, the white man that Mizu was looking for. And for them, news of the Four Fangs being killed by one samurai has reached them and Baija is not actually 
and you get to see a bit of Elijah's skill in killing with his bare hands or sword and sees that it's pretty good. It's pretty freaking good. But what Haibi Shindo does is actually set up a meeting, a tea meeting, with Mizu. Now, while all of this is actually going on as well, you have Seki and Akima escaping from their home and traveling on the road. Now, while Seki has raised Akima since she was a child, he has gone along with her to try to wait for her to see reason and try to convince her to return home. But Akimi is stubborn and arrogant because she does not know the world and does not want to listen to anybody telling her what she cannot do and what the world actually is, how dangerous it is. Within a short order, they are captured by brigands and set about to walk while all their valuables are taken. Now, the story with them wraps up over time pretty quickly, but it ends with Seiki trying to tell her he's, he was waiting for her to come to reason. And her, Akima, in hearing his reasoning for what he did, that Seki was the one who set up the match between the Shogun's younger son and all this stuff for Akima, Akimi, she decides to rebel against that and walks into this tavern and starts trying to pass herself off at a high class as a high class courtesan in order to get to the city she wants to get a boat. Right? She wants to find Tygen and bring him back before her four, four days are up before her father decides that she needs to go to the, the Shogun's son off to Edo. Now, once inside this tavern, she is able to finesse a guy, Goro, into taking her to this next city. And Seki just has to sit in her watch as she uses her feminine wiles to get her way with this strange man, passing herself off as a chorus. And before the end of the episode, she is gone. She's off with this guy and she's heading to the same city that Taiyin and Mizu and Ringo were recently in. They have since moved on because the message from Jisindo was delivered to them and they follow uh, what's his name? Okiyama to the meeting place where they're going to have tea. Now throughout this journey there are some pleasantries and stories, more history told between Taigen and Mizu, and actually come from the same city, prefecture, whatever you want to call it. And Taigen remembers Mizu. It's like Mizu remembers Taigen. Taigen was one of the bullies in the first episode when they were kids. So he remembers Mizu because of the blue eyes. But Taigen believes that he's a boy. He does not know that that's a girl yet. They share a little bit of their stories or a little bit of Tygen's um, backstory to find out why he is so wed to the samurai stuff and having his honor and holding on to that. Because for him, he had an abusive father who was a fisherman. And when his father finally died, he understood his choices were either to fish or pick up the sword and cut his own path. And he decided to cut his own path instead of being a fisherman like his father. So this whole thing with being a samurai and being really good and honor code and everything else is what he wants. 
And Mizu, in some ways, has taken that from him callously by cutting off his top knot in a fight and leaving him with no honor, or at least dishonor. Now, that was a bit interesting, but it still leads into the same thing that both of these characters have had some abuse in their lives and what they are trying to achieve, they are very fixated on in a almost self-destructive way, almost. Now, Okiyama leads them to the meeting for the tea ceremony, and Mizu and Taigen go in and meet Haji Shindo for tea, and they find out the whole spiel between Haji Shindo, uh, Abijah Fowler, discovering his name, and a plan that he has to sneak Mizu into the castle to kill um, Abijah Fowler for him because he's tired of the battle of shit, pretty much. Well, things did not go as planned as would happen. The double cross was in effect, and Mizu and Taigen are left to try to escape from this open bowl ravine, in a sense, while 500 archers shoot arrows at them to escape. Sounds like a bad day at 300. Now, by the end of this episode, you see that while Mizu and Taigen have escaped, Tigan's escape was only brief. And he is recaptured and taken back to Abijah Fowler's castle and brought in in a large sake cast as a gift to Abijah Fowler. And without spoiling any two more, that is pretty much the episode. Now, the show is still interesting. It's still interesting to find out what's going on with all these people. I do find Mizu, Mizu acting a little bit too tough. A little bit too tough. A little too much boasting. Right? Or it's full of themselves, full of um, but regardless of that, I'm still enjoying the show. I'm curious to find out what was going on with these other four white men that were around and alive in Japan at the time that Mesa was born. Um, I'm still curious how that is going to shake out and what the importance is of them. These are all names on her hit list, and she has taken out one of them already. She's working her way, I guess, up. To the main boss. So while they have shown Abijah Fowler a few times, they have shown no one past him. No. But be that as it may, I am still enjoying the show. It still looks beautiful. Every time I watch the show, I want to play Ghost of Tsushima. And seeing where this story goes with this character, what this character has had to deal with, is interesting because let's just say the mother on the opium didn't end well. it didn't end well for a young child to see it. so it is a sticking point for them they still have not explained what happened to the sword master uh, master ag um, i'm thinking he was died other than being killed Kill would be a whole different type of revenge story. But I do believe he has passed. He is, he is not here anymore. And that's one of the reasons Mizu got out into the world and started going after her revenge for these four men. So 
I am liking the show. Three episodes in, I'm still involved in it. I'm still curious about what happens next. I just think with this show, maybe an hour-long, 45-minute-long episode might have been too much for me. Even though I'm getting a lot of information in that five minutes, it's just seeming like it's, it's taking too long. But that's what it is. But overall, I'm enjoying it. We'll be tuning in for episode four, the halfway point. Um, yeah, so like, share, subscribe. Support the stream if you feel so inclined. I'm Artisan Lucy, and I will see you next time. Peace.